All right, so when it comes to like vascular patients who have like an exposed graft, is that an automatic take the graft out then, or is there any reason to salvage the graft? Really? Because right now, unless, you know, for us, it was always a golden rule if I see graft, I'm taking it out. At least in the front. So maybe I'll, next time I'll send them to you first before taking the graft out. Because to take the graft out, the leg is going to be jeopardized. Oh, it be salvage. Yeah. May I independently confirm Dr. Chow's success with muscle flaps? He has saved, personally, probably three legs of my patients. The muscle flap is a picture graph. It's amazing that it works. Love you, Jerry. So can you tell us a little bit, I mean, I know that, um, you know that Botox, a lot of people use Botox in the face and whatnot. And I, I've been saying, I've actually been calling you on these patients where I can't do anything and send them to you for Botox injections. Can you expand on that? Well, it, Botox works, basically it paralyzes the smooth muscle. That's what it's doing. And, and when you paralyze the smooth muscle, it's a vessel dynamics and you can increase circulation to your toes, your feet, and stuff like that. Uh, the problem is the insurance companies don't want to pay for it. Otherwise, we'll be using it a lot more. Unless the patient is willing to pay off the money, unless the patient is admitted in the hospital and try to sneak that through, it's impossible. <laughs> 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 well, they get admitted for the wound. By the time we injected it, the building department was even there. <laughs> but, but Dr. Shaw is the only one I know that does that. Uh, I have a guy who, the emergency room, did a surgery, put a tourniquet on his finger. Did you see him? And the finger got really black. And they put both arms on him. Yes. For a surgery. I don't ask so many questions. <laughs> Because you know, in my experience, when I've had an exposed graft and I resect that portion of that graft and I do a jump graft around it, because I didn't resect the whole thing, it's not long before the rest of it's they come back. The rest of it's infected. You know? So in the end, I always just take everything out, and that's how I was trained. That just you just once they graft it, we'll just take everything out. So at least with the ones in the groin, if we can salvage those, those are great. Because that's a that's a mess, and I hate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question. Uh, my question is from an internal medicine standpoint. You know, these patients that I see on these pictures, I mean, they're looking like their A1C is like 12. And so do you jump right in and remove that? Do you have boundaries to say, well, we need to get their A1C down to the age before I'll touch them? Um, I'm obviously, they have IV involved. They have, um, you know, vascular involved. And Again, most of these patients, Everybody else is already involved. They only call me when there's no other choice. It's sad. I wish I could see the room. Do you do a class for like the unit? Do you do a class for like the unit? For a bariatric? The NROG can't fish that. Well, you know, anal fishing. From diverticulitis or, uh, or Crohn's. Crohn's. Why can't you fix it? Yeah, tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some jealousy in here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
company and then close the muscle. Seal everything. No pain, no nothing. Back to work. That's incredible. Back to work. So if we're even like some of these DK before we go and switch them back to an AK, maybe we should try to see about flat poses before converting them to AK to an AK. Thoughts? Yeah, we all have a limb is. You should give us a chance. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really, I thought you the gracilis flap, the sartorius flap, it's going to save your groin grafts nine out of ten times. Absolutely. Seriously. <coughs> and your limb, that's okay. Do you have any recommendations like you say all these other So I guess the question is, do you want to see him earlier rather than yeah, later? Yeah, when do you say, I give up? I have no control on this. No, I know you don't. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations yeah. for people in the audience to say, that's the time that they send them earlier rather than later? Well, I'm not a wound doctor. <laughs> <laughs> he said that at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After six weeks, if it's not healed by six weeks, maybe give us, a, give us an opinion. Six weeks is good. <laughs> Gary, I like what you said about seeing a wound every two weeks. I think that that's probably the most important thing is yeah. to make sure that the the measures you're implementing are having an effect for the patient. And you know, you follow up in two weeks, see me again in four, you're a little suspicious. Once you see him on the fourth week, sixth week, it's not working, you need expert help. And I, I think six weeks is fair, but what you're doing is not working in four, it's not gonna work in eight. Wounds will tell you very quickly whether what you're doing is working. That, that's path mnemonic for this disease. If what you're doing is working, the wound will tell you very quickly. Within two weeks or four weeks, you know whether that wound's working, or whether it's healing, if you've got the granulation tissue. You, you should not be managing a wound three months, six months. You know right away, you'll know, you just have to be honest with yourself that you need help, you need to get Jerry involved. Um, and, and the, the patient frustration is, is unbelievably uh, intolerable after about six weeks. They really, they don't like coming back three strikes, four strikes, five strikes. Uh, you'll alienate them, their cousin won't come, they won't refer their aunt. So six weeks, uh, get them over to somebody who might be able to help is probably a good idea. Hey Jan, just real quick, I know that in the wound thing, you, you asked them every week, Nothing. I just, I just want to know the. Okay. I just want to know the thought process. If you have a yellow light, I mean, so many times what we're doing is we're dealing with what is the wound like today, absolute, do I continue my treatment, or do I need something more aggressive? You've got a guy here in the community who pretty much knows A to Z from minimally invasive to maximally invasive. I don't think you need to be afraid. You're not sending the patient there for a muscle flap. You're not sending the patient there for some gigantic island flap. You're sending them to Jerry 
or to a plastic surgeon for reassessment, reevaluation, and for consultation. So I don't think you have to always think of something as I'm working with these wound care products and now it's surgery. The yellow light is where they need to see the surgeon, not when everybody agrees nothing's working. When, when you're not seeing the progress, that's the time to come in to try to avoid that big surgery three months later. So hard to, limb, limb salvage is, is, is different. We got to be passionate about limb salvage to really be successful and be, and be willing to Thank you all. For, you guys have any questions real quick for Dr. Chow? Thanks, 